We're moving on to the new measurement technique that's called the rule of halves. I'm going to provide you guys with a reference that looks exactly like this. And you'll see that here it says half, 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 half. In actuality, I understand that this is a quarter. This is a quarter. And the, down here it could be 12 fifths. But in order for us to understand this better, we call it the rule of halves. The way you start this technique, this technique is different from sight size because it allows you to change the size of your reference. So um, here, I've already I'm going to provide you with this paper and you're going to do a stitch. You're going to draw him large and you're going to draw him smaller than the reference. And we're going to go over how you're going to do that exactly. I'm going to speak about this briefly in class. But in essence, what you have to do is you have to start with arbitrary measurements. Arbitrary means whatever you want it to be. Um, um, this technique works to fulfill whatever size you want to do. Um, it could be as big as a billboard on the side of the street or as small as a few inches. And this technique will allow you to do it in proportion if it's followed through correctly. It is a little bit more complicated than the site size method, but it's not impossible to understand. The first thing you want to do is you want to pick where uh, the top and the bottom are going to be. I've already chosen that for you. So I've chosen it to be here and here. The next thing you want to do is find the middle or find the half. That's why it's called the rule of halves and we're going to do this a few times. So with your pencil, you want to measure and just put mark where you think the middle is and just move the pencil up and if the two sides are even then you're right that's where the middle is um, obviously start lightly because you're gonna make a mistake you know until you get it right now I'm just gonna quickly measure that one more time and it needs to be even a little bit lower than that once I have the accurate measurement, I'll shade it in a little bit darker. So you can see, again, I'm measuring with the tip of my pencil and I'm putting my finger at the other end. So it looks something like this. And just to make sure that the other half is the same, I'm gonna shift it up and measure it again. And this is the halfway mark. I did say that I would try to make sure that you could see that better. So let me adjust the lighting to possibly um, make it better to see. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn off my light. And that's, that's much better for you. So you can actually see it during class. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to check from the halfway point to the bottom and we're going to get the halfway point of that, which is actually the quarter of the whole thing. But as we get smaller and smaller, we're just going to continue to call it a half. That way it's still easy to understand. So I'm going to measure with my pencil. I'm going to make a line and I'm going to check it and it needs to be just a little bit higher. And this line is correct. Now, since that's the quarter, we don't have to measure the top. So we're just gonna take the quarter measurement, we're gonna go all the way up to the half, and we're gonna make it right there. Again, this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It's just a basic indicator line to guide you while you do this, all right? Now that we have five lines here, five indicator lines, you can start using your reference. Obviously, when you have a reference and you begin this assignment, it's not gonna be mapped out like this, like I've mapped it out for you, but hopefully this makes it much easier to understand and it makes it easier for you to understand uh, the purpose of this measurement technique. So we know that the halfway point is somewhere here, right around, and we could cast an imaginary line. So we know that that's right there uh, near the tongue. But before we do that, and this is probably gonna be the most difficult thing for you guys, is we need to um, see how thick this is gonna be. Now the way that you do that, and I've written it up here, is you need to take a, a, a reference point from your vertical distance and then compare it to your width. So, 
I'm going to, um, which I've already done it, and I know that right up here, right up where from the bottom foot to the head, that is the width, the widest width from ear to ear. So that happens to be 75% of the way up. That's around this half. So over here on this side, it's 75% of the way up. So I know that the width is equal to 75% of my height. So I'm just gonna mark that as well and that's gonna tell me exactly how wide the widest point needs to be. So right there, and I'm gonna mark this with my, my finger and right there. So now we can continue this line up and down and up and down. We know this is our bottom line. This is our top line. Let me do this a little bit darker so you guys can see it better. So we know that our stitch should comfortably fit in this box. Okay. As we continue to look at this reference, we know that the nose falls in between here and here, right? A little bit further below this half. So now we need to continue with our with our halves. Now this is around the time where I'm going to start drawing. So I will probably fast forward through this part or skip it in class. By jotting down that measurement, we can begin to see where we're gonna place things in a little bit more detail. All right, I've adjusted the paper so it fits better on the screen. Um, I know there's a, a bit of a shadow, but I think it's much easier for you to see the lines this way. So now we're going to start. Uh, we know that this is the top of the head. Right. This is the top of the left ear. Okay. The right ear is above this line, but not all the way to the top. So we start making these types of comparisons. This represents this line, which goes through both eyes. This is the midway point, which falls midway through the mouth. Right here at this line, is the bottom jaw. This line can represent the arch of the back. And this line, right above this line is the tail. And we know that this is the width from ear to ear. So, You're still going to measure uh, like this, comparing things to themselves, especially when it comes to the width. So like, let's say we want to know how wide the head is. We're going to, again, just use a, a vertical comparison and we're going to see if this line indicates how wide the head is. And that's really accurate. That's really close. So we know that from here to here, that's a safe measurement to indicate how wide the head is going to be. Now this technique isn't as clear cut as the sight size technique. So there is a lot of mental interpretation that happens. So we know that the head is now this wide. Now how far down does the head go? We also indicated that this green line, right, represents this line. So we also know that the head goes that far down and it's that wide. How high does the head go? That's two lines above the middle. This is our middle. And that's two lines above the middle. So the head should comfortably go in this area. Okay. We know that the top ear is over here. So we could already just 
lay it out. Remember that these are guidelines and it doesn't have to come out exactly like the reference. Okay, this purple line, our ear ends, well, our ear ends a little bit above the blue line, a little bit below the purple line. So a little bit above the blue line, say right here. And I'm talking about this line right here. And we are going to just put this in its place. Follow the line. We're going to do an assignment online very soon. And if you have to change something, change something. Don't be afraid to, to change it if you think it could be better or if you feel like you've made a mistake. But ultimately what we're looking for is that it resembles the character. And as long as it resembles the character, we're in good shape. That's the line I have for the ear so far. I'm trying to draw dark so you can see it a little bit better but I am trying to stay loose while I draw dark. And I'm not sure if this is going to work yet, but I do know that how high and how low the head needs to be. And I know the measurement for the head and I'm just trying to work with that. This is the halfway point. So I'm trying to figure out where this little curve is. And I know that it goes up right to the end of the head down a bit and now we kind of go straight like this. Let's quickly sketch in the features of the head. We know that this is our purple line over here so the nose is much higher than that very close to the top of the head and on the top of the head we're going to add a few little hairs. And then over here we're going to add our nose. Um, also, this is dipping a little bit into relational proportion, but we could check how many noses is the, the head. So we're doing the nose and we know that the nose is two and a half times the width of the face. So we know that if we can get that in our measurements, then we'll be pretty accurate. And I feel like it's about that wide. Your nose is pretty wide. Um, it, the bottom doesn't quite reach our halfway line. As a matter of fact, the bottom isn't anywhere near our halfway line. So it's much closer to our purple line. So we're going to make a little line here indicating where the bottom is. Uh, this technique does take some practice. I didn't even teach it last year, but this year I'm giving you guys everything. So hopefully, um, one of the measuring techniques sticks with you. And you can make your measurement, but if it feels a little bit off, you can also correct it. So don't be afraid to correct it. But try to trust your measurement, you know, measure twice three times if you have to, four times, do it as many times as you have to. Right above the nose, we have two little lines. And this eye is going into the nose. Now this is much more round, so we're going to round this off. Okay. And now let's start putting the mouth. Follow the shape of the mouth.
is round. Make sure you continuously look at your reference. This feels, I feel like that has to be a little bit thinner. So we're going to make it thinner. And this contour just has to be a little bit closer to the bottom of the mouth. There, it feels much better. Uh, let's go ahead and put in space for the other eye. I'm going to make the head a little bit more pointy here. I feel like it needs to be. So right there. And let's go ahead and put this eye in its place. Check where the, the eye turns, and it turns right around here, right around the nostril. Add this little line below. Add this little line over here. So erase this extra line. Let's finally erase our indicator line in the middle of the mouth. And let's add the pupils. That big spot in the middle of the eye that's called the highlight, that's very important. We want to make sure we leave that right where it is or that we put it in its place. We don't forget about it. put in this eye. Go ahead and don't forget that highlight. Shade that eye in. Um, right now, I'd like to put in that other ear. So, while you're working, it's okay to erase some of these guidelines. You know that they're still there, so you could still use them. They've just been replaced by the top of the head or whatever it is that you've put in its place. And over here, remember that this piece of the ear is missing, is missing a chunk. Let's quickly put in the other ear. And after that, we'll start with the rest of the body. To see where that ear starts, it starts right by the eye. Sketch it in. Where does the, this part of the ear start? It starts over here, close to the curve. And I feel like this is too wide right now. So let's push this a little bit higher. Now we want to go slightly above this line, which is the orange line on the paper, but not all the way to the top. So right there. And then we're just going to curve that out. Pay attention closely here, it's like a half sickle, also missing a piece, and this has a nice curve to it. Uh, 
and that's the head. We're going to move on to the teeth and then we'll do the body. But I think the head is the most challenging part of this particular assignment. Now we're moving on to the teeth. Um, again, use the lines so this is, you can still see where my halfway line was. And right above that, also use some relational proportion, which is the next measuring technique. Meaning, if this line, which represents this line, is here, then these two teeth do not cross the halfway mark. They're a little bit below. They should be a little bit wider. Draw lightly in case you have to erase. But we're not looking for it to be 100% the same. I'm drawing a little bit darker, just so you can see. Okay, so this is my halfway mark, which means that those teeth have to be even smaller. This isn't matching up 100%, but it's good enough as long as it still looks like the stitch will be in good shape. So far, so good. And that's good enough for the teeth. And now we're moving on to the rest of the body. And we know that this ear comes out that far. The tail doesn't come out quite as far as the ear, but it still comes out far enough. So we are gonna make our line somewhere near over there. Um, we're gonna start right here. This is this is the line that was representing our green line over here, I'm not mistaken. So our curve is gonna come down and it's gonna curve right along that line. It's gonna take a sharp turn down. It's gonna pass our next line, which would be the light green line. And just try to draw lightly in case you have to change that. I'm drawing dark just so you can see. We're gonna go all the way down. I'm not going to pass the pink line. We're going to do our tail. Right. 
and that tail is going to fall right on the pink line, which would be this line for us. And we're going to come in. Now we have to start drawing our foot. But before we do that, again, this is our light green line. Let's do a little curve, which represents where the knee would be. And go ahead and draw the foot. Now the foot goes all the way, as a matter of fact, it goes over our pink line. and it goes all the way down to the bottom. And do a light circle in here. To represent the palm of the foot, the heel, and a little line going through that. Right here, do a little line just above our light green line. I know that the lines aren't matching up here, but just change it as you see fit. I want this back to curve a little bit more, so I'm going to curve it. And then he's got some patterns on his or her back. On the other end, I'm going to start the other foot. Again, that this line right here would be our dark green line. So I'm going to extend that down. I'm going to curve it. This is our light green line over here. So I'm going to curve it right here. I'm going to curve it again. Curve it one more time. Right there, right around where the pink line would be. And we're going to put in toes. With some very long nails. And now while we're at it, let's go ahead and add the chest hairs. chest. The other arm, got a curve, starts to curve right around the green line, push that down and then it curves way below the pink line. And now we're going to add some finger fingers. This isn't 100% because we still would need a little bit of space there, but it does definitely look like stitch, and that's what we're going for. And let's go ahead and add the last piece. This would be our light green line. So we know that the other foot starts right there. 
curves up a little bit. Curves down. down and that would normally end right where that nail is but instead of ending it there I'm just going to curve it down a little bit more and end it right by the toe and add a little back to it and that's it as far as the larger drawing is concerned and zoom in on that so you can see it a little bit better it's definitely stitch and that completes the demonstration for the rule of halves. For the smaller one, you just have to do the same thing. Um, obviously with smaller measurements, but it's the same process. Find the half, find the quarter, find 75% of the way, compare something vertically to find the width, so on and so forth. And if you follow those rules and you understand those rules, you should do just fine. You'll have plenty of time for this assignment, so don't worry about it. Take your time and make sure you understand the rule of halves.